is Mark and Charity Mornings. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast. With the sun out here in Belleville, Ontario, Canada. A beautiful December. Beautiful. 14th. Tuesday, December 14th. Coming up, Elon Musk named News Person of the Year, according to Time Magazine, the history of it. And why that might be a controversial choice. Procter & Gamble raised a bundle for our local United Way of Hastings Prince Edward to help them get closer to their $1.95 million goal. But as we mentioned yesterday on the podcast today, a look at 2022 based on your horoscope and how it's so full of hooey. You think it is. Yeah. But people really believe this. I know. But and it's that's just... why I find it so funny that you wanted to talk about this because you don't believe in this at all. You hate these lists. I do. You hate it. The type of cookie you like tells us about you. Ugh. The colors that you like. You put sprinkles it. on a cookie. You're, <laughs> you're, you're an outlandish risk taker. Really? Or maybe I just like sprinkles exactly. on my cookies. So when you propose this, said there's a horoscope saying how 2022 is shaping up for each zodiac sign. I want to talk about it. I nearly fell off my chair. Because it's just so ridiculous, <laughs> not because I buy into it. Okay. Sagittarius. Well, resolutions are usually associated with sticking to one thing for an entire year. You should do just the opposite. So just keep throwing stuff against the wall. See what sticks. And that's your, <laughs> oh, okay. Like well, who looked in the stars? if you're Sagittarius, then you should do that. Capricorn, relax and take it easy. See, Capricorn's not going to do that. They're going to have I a know. great year. I would love to be Capricorn. It said, as much as this might be easier said than done, you deserve to take a year-long vacation. Oh, so Capricorn exactly. can, not us. Again, I wish I was Capricorn. <laughs> Aquarius, roll up your sleeves and get to work. <laughs> That's them. That's it. <laughs> Short so and now sweet. I'm a Pisces. It says okay. with Jupiter in Pisces, whatever that means. The effects on you are magnified, allowing you to step into your most enlightened self. And I don't even know what that means. You're more aware. Okay. Why didn't they more say in that? Tune. I'm not, yeah. Because See? I and am in tune. And this is where it starts. This no. is where it starts. You're already opening yourself up to <laughs> okay, astrology. If you live with an Aries, you know there is, there is no living with an Aries because uh -oh. it says, uh, for this year, you can really do no wrong. As if any typical Aries needed to hear this. <laughs> They're already confident We'll enlighten you enough. with the fact that your life is about to go up in flames. Oh, Good no. for you, Aries. Okay. Taurus, looks like the universe still has its ups and downs in store for you. Well, it does for everybody. Yeah, but more so for Taurus. Apparently. Gemini, with a year as busy as the one you're about to embark on, to end a sentence in a preposition, you could make almost any resolution and just keeping it would be an accomplishment. Poor Gemini. <laughs> Keep the bar low. Right. <laughs> Leo, this coming year is about to shake up your world like you never thought possible. That would have been the one into 2020. Well, and that's Wayne, Leo. so now I'm a little concerned. Hopefully it's for the good. Yeah. What are we up to? Virgo? Did you say cancer? No. Uh, yeah, sorry, I did. Sorry, you did Taurus. Cancer? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> when you've gone through as many personal challenges as you would have over the last few years, you're as ready as Britney Spears to come out of your shell. <laughs> That's why I wanted to hear that. And show the world what you're made of. Yes. Oh. Sorry, I didn't want you to skip over it. No, but by, yeah, by it, it, all could means. Be, it could be a rough year for cancer, too. So, Virgo, we hope you will get your beauty sleep because your calendar is about to get busy. Oh, well, that sounds Libra, intriguing. which is my wife, you've probably invested a lot of energy on personal and professional relationships in the past, and now it's time to put yourself first. There you go. Okay. And Scorpio, you. you're a Scorpio? I am a Scorpio. Let your creative juices flow because 2022 is about to light your sense of creativity awesome. on fire. Cannot wait. On fire. Watch out. 2022, you, you probably should watch out more than anybody. <laughs> a couple of those signs are just stay in bed. Don't oh, even get absolutely. up. And it's funny because you did make the comment before we got into this about how it's it all comes down to interpretation. And it does. Of course, it does. like yeah. anything, but especially with astrology, it's all comes down to interpretation. And the, so take the, it for what it is and run with it. The phrase move the goalposts always comes into effect when I read that. You can believe it. And then when mm -hmm. one thing happens in mid-September, it's like, oh, my, it said that way back. It's like, yeah, it didn't okay. happen for the first nine and a half months. You waited for something where you won a free ticket in 649 and said, remember my year was going to take off? <laughs> it's a free ticket. <laughs> but for some, that's enough. That's enough. That's, that's all it, it took is. to prove so. that the horoscope worked. So, <laughs> so when my creative juices start flowing, Mark, and you wait, you watch out. And apparently I'm going to be self-enlightened 
That would be like a lightning bolt to me. <laughs> a frying pan. <laughs> so, yeah, right to the forehead. <laughs> So happy 22, well, everybody. Elon Musk is leaving 2021 as Time Magazine's news person of the year. He is the person of the year, according to Time Magazine. Yeah. They, so the criteria for this, in case you're wondering, yeah. a person, a group, an idea, or an object that for better or for worse, so whether you agree with it or not, mm-hmm. has done the most to influence the events of the year. And okay. you can't argue that Elon Musk has been a bit of an influencer. When they list what he has done this past year, it's like, oh, yeah, he did do that. Selling off his possessions, moving to Texas. He launched some rockets into space here. He like did. He was one of the ones. Yep. Um, invented new driverless cars. Shared that he actually has Asperger's. He shared that diagnosis while hosting Saturday Night Live yeah. this fall. And influenced the stock market just by tweeting. So to say he doesn't have some influence... Would be wrong. Of course he does. But is he the biggest influencer? Is he the person of the year? Are they right by naming him as person of the year? uh, The history of Time Magazine's, what used to be called Newsman of the Year, Mm -hmm. goes back a long, one time and changed it, and rightly so. And the, the argument being... That it's the person that, as I said, influenced, but people would take that as a positive thing. In other words, it was an honor to be named Time Magazine's. So in 1939, when Time Magazine's Newsman of the Year was Adolf Hitler, everybody got kind of up in arms about that. How can you honor what it, and it's like, we're not honoring him. Mm -hmm. Who made more news on this Mm -hmm. planet in 1939 than Adolf Hitler did? And so then people started rethinking, well, so when you said the criteria, we don't necessarily want to make it, you know, Muammar Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein or people who are, you know, Osama bin Laden. You know, that's not who we want to go. A, Time Magazine wants to sell copies of, of course the magazine. They do. Of course they do. But it, it has become a reflection of who influences the news. Exactly. If you go back to 2016, Donald Trump. Yeah. President of the United States. Times person of the year and even then people were on yay or nay yay they or had nay. very yeah. strong feelings on both mm-hmm. sides so yeah even if you might not agree with trump you cannot argue the fact that he was a huge influencer on the news on the news around the world not just with the news but just in general he was out there he was everywhere and as well as naming people of the year they also have groups like they have hero of the year for example yes which were the vaccine scientists vaccine sci- who might it was have just been, a group yeah. so it included everybody who worked on the vaccine who might have been people of the year because movements and groups have been named people of the year before including uh, those of the me too movement they were a cover right. of people of the year before but to go along with with the the heroes of the year for that reason i thought maybe dr fauci mm-hmm. would be times person of the year so i guess maybe not the most the biggest influencer though even last year and that made me question last year's but last year's was joe biden and kamala harris kamala of harris, course because yeah. they were elected but um i thought he would be more times person of the year as opposed to elon musk i guess elon musk over many different disciplines from the science to the entertainment to the financial I mean, Fauci is pretty important, but he's a one-trick pony, <laughs> right? So if you don't <laughs> want to talk true. about, that's true. He was kind of more just the person that maybe we all turn to through. Mm-hmm. And we, I say all, mainly North Americans, because even though he's American, I think many of us here in Canada followed what he was saying too, along with our own doctors and scientists here. Yeah. But he was very much a face during the pandemic uh, that we recognized and felt connected to in some way, and influenced to a degree, but no, not as maybe in the same venue or as many veins as Elon Musk. Simone Biles was named Athlete of the Year mm-hmm. with the Summer Olympics, though she rarely took part, but the influence but that again, she played on the... sport and mental health. Exactly. And uh, Olivia Rodrigo and her driver's license named the Entertainer you of see, the Year. see, that one bothered me. Yeah? It did. I'm like, really? Out of all the entertainers mm-hmm. out there too, Olivia Rodrigo, because... Because she was on the charts. She was on the chart a lot this year, and she had several Not more than anybody else. I wouldn't say so. Not as much as Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Yeah. Elton Joe. Well, even this holiday season. To me, that seems like an odd... Billie Eilish. Seems like an odd Mm -hmm. choice. Ellen on her way out. Didn't have to be a musician. It's entertainer of the year. I get it. Yeah. Nobody's going to the movies that much so actors okay i get that 
But was there nobody else who was more? What if you had named had more Netflix? of an influence? What if you had named Netflix as Entertainer of the Year? That's interesting to go that way. Go outside the box. Come on, Time Magazine. As opposed to an actual, as opposed to a person, but a group again. A group. Yeah. An organization that would be Entertainer of the Year because you can't deny Netflix is or your television. What if the answer was your television, <gasps> oh. Entertainer of the Year? Because we're still staying inside. That's, very, that's a very smart choice. We should have choice. our year and <laughs> list. But Olivia Rodrigo, no. Yeah. I don't think she's Rookie that. Rookie of the year, maybe. But maybe. Like, she's young. She's very young. Mm-hmm. And yes, I would maybe say her, her age group, her demo, her audience, she might influence. But the rest, mm-hmm. the rest of us, I wouldn't say so. Wow. Okay. The TV, definitely. All right. Interesting, Mark. You've we'll, got, work on, we'll work on that. And before we let you go, hats <laughs> off to Procter & Gamble, the big company here in Belleville to the tune of over a quarter of a million dollars to the United Way campaign. Hats off again. Always the largest donor in the $2 million campaign, $1.95 million. But let's get to $2 million, okay? We had Brandy Hodge on the show this morning, the executive director, talking about how they went through the allocations and they've uh, seen allocations of half a million dollars more than they normally oh, handle. The need wow. is so great. So great. And uh, thanks to fine folks like the staff and management and matching funds of the company with Procter & Gamble, we're, we're going to try and get all the way there. $260,000 yeah. from Procter & Gamble went into mm. their total, which is sitting at one point um, or one million four hundred sixty-five thousand currently. Yeah. So as you mentioned, they're hoping for one point nine five by the end of January. So they're really pushing this last six weeks. So any and as Brandy pointed out, every dollar because of the allocated funds now that they need and and everything else involved with the United Way, every dollar donated counts. So very important. If you are running an at-work campaign, of which we did here, and we had the highest total we've ever had this year. Really? It's not $260,000. But highest here within yeah, our company. That we've ever had is the highest amount. And I've That's already incredible. dropped it off. So if you are running your campaign at your workplace, get it in before mm-hmm. Christmas. Yes, you've got until January, but don't make them wait. No. Because the, the more that they see coming in, it encourages others to get going. If you are not tied to a uh, an at-work program or a payroll deduction program and you want to make a donation, United Way of Hastings, Prince Edward. Google it at uh, unitedwayhpe.ca, something like that. Yes. Uh, start typing that in. It'll come up. Yep. Uh, and make a donation because uh, all the funds stay right here in the community for with well over 50 programs. And uh, do it because uh, Procter & Gamble did it. Yeah, kudos and to you, Procter & Gamble. Nice work. Huge supporter. And the history on that, and I don't know who's on the campaign. When I was chairing it some 10 years ago, a guy by the name of Danny Nickel was running it. And I, honest to God, and I can say this because we're in a podcast. <laughs> Oh, no. I don't. I don't know what his job was at Procter and Gamble. I only know he did the campaign with me. Okay. And he w- always would stop whatever he was doing if I called to say, or he would call me and say, "Can you come out because for the next three hours of Procter and Gamble, we're doing a product sale for our staff." And so maybe he had another actual job there. <laughs> I didn't know what it was, or whether they gave him relief from his duties, or whether because he, he was just always... did it on top. Yeah. Of whatever his other job was. It was massive. The man was always doing stuff. And for the United Way. For the United yeah. Way. And I but I, I suppose he's from had, Procter and Gamble. From Procter and Gamble. <laughs> like, what is your real job? <laughs> whatever it is, maybe he did it at night. Maybe he did it and then over his lunch he would do the United That's Way amazing. stuff. So when I heard Brandy this morning say that campaign is fifty two weeks of the year. It's all year long. And the committee is tireless. I know. I've seen it. People like Danny Nichol, I'm not sure if he's still working there, whether he's retired, and boy, has he earned it. Mm-hmm. Um, tremendous, tremendous support. These are the product sales, of course. Can't because of COVID. We used to be able to go out on a Saturday morning in September. I remember September those sales. Yes, they were, great. they were great deals. Sometimes they'd make upwards of $100,000 for the campaign on products donated by great companies like Amer Sports, Wilson Sports here in town, various other ones, and, of course, Procter & Gamble was one of the major supporters of that. So they just keep on giving. They just keep on giving. And thank goodness they do. Yep. And so many benefit because of it. So thank you to them for doing it. For sure. It's Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast for Tuesday, December the 14th on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, and through our social media sites tomorrow. It'll be the Burger Revolution 
Throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursday. Tee up. We're going to let you know what uh, songs are going to be available. And it is a bit of a talking about entertainers of the year. Exactly. Karen, it ties into a really popular documentary that's out right now on Disney+. Plus. We'll give you those songs. And lots more coming up tomorrow morning with Mark and Charity Mornings. Have a great Tuesday.